How do you perceive the relationship between scholarship and activism in general and in your own work? I actually believe that education, um, when, when you say scholarship, do you mean girls scholarship or what exactly do you no, mean? No, when we say scholarship, we mean it's more of academic, academia work, like specialized field within the feminist. Okay. I think um, I think that is really it's very related because it has something to do with with um, empowerment of individual. When someone um, become an academic, someone has to go through mm -hmm. a process of education to be mm -hmm. in that level. And I believe in I believe in the scholarship and feminism because it will provide it will provide someone power and a position to be able actually to advocate what that person actually believe and what person mm -hmm. trust in the heart. So it's very feminism and scholarship is very is very related and because the power the power of education or the power of scholarship is very mm -hmm. is very alive and is very strong and uh, you can only be able to influence policies to 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 influence policies to influence decisions and to influence practice and attitude if you get this kind of um, scholarship to be able to 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 do it and keep caring what you are doing. Okay, thank you. So I strongly, mm -hmm. so I strongly believe that uh, the scholarship and the fe feminism are very, very related, but it depends now on how do we make best use of those opportunities. Yeah, all right, thank you. And if we go to the intersection of your work with the women's movement in the country and globally, what is your analysis? Yeah, my analysis are uh, the feminism and advocacy for women rights is very is very complex. It's a long time process. It's a long time uh, transformational process, and it will, is is not like building a classroom. It's a, it's an empowering process which requires someone commitment, deep commitment, and um, and is 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 actually is very is always it has a lot of consequences mm -hmm. especially when you start mm -hmm. but uh, when you have when you have those connections and you collaborate with others mm -hmm. who are like other other women network across the globe and even um, locally nationally we have mm -hmm. seen a lot of um, we have seen a significant achievement in women movement and women um, taking initiatives, for example, mm -hmm. in northern Tanzania, for the first mm -hmm. time ministry during the election, during the last election, mm -hmm. actually, we have been mentoring 30 female leaders across the mm -hmm. three districts that we work with mm -hmm. to be able to, we, to, to, to build their confidence, to provide um, mm -hmm. the knowledge, and to provide skills and resources that are needed for them to be mm -hmm. able to stand as member of parliaments and councillors in the in, in in the country and it was it was really it was very important to see them the way they are strong um they are strong and able to deal with verbal abuse um bad languages and even even the even even they, they were able to deal with their families um consequences of them standing as a strong women mm -hmm. and for the first time in history i saw Mass for mass women contesting um, to become member of parliament. They they did not win, but it was really like a, a big, a big. Uh, it's like a, a landslide because they have never stood. They have never had that confidence to stand, to stand and just even ask for for votes. And mm -hmm. I feel like this was very empowering. But also a lot of them have become councillors. They are now in. There are many in the full in, in the council, mm. and uh, I think this is uh, this is part of what we have been doing. But also, I have seen when we started Paso Women's Council mm. here in Northern Tanzania, we have a lot of land issues, challenges with 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 investors who do not understand Basualist way of life, mm. and we have been fighting with them. Sometimes you find us doing a lot of uh, strategic litigations, doing community mm. empowerment. But when we started. You hardly see any single woman in these meetings. 
Mm. But as we talk today, women are, pioneer, are pioneers of land rights in Northern Tanzania. They challenge the government, they challenge investors, they challenge the leaders, they challenge themselves. And this is really giving me energy and passion mm. to, to continue doing this important work. And I feel like this is really good. We just now need to link, to link mm. beyond, to link our struggles and our success beyond what we are doing today here mm -hmm. we need to we need others mm -hmm. women across across africa to understand our work and be able really to, to document those kind of stories mm -hmm. yeah and i think it's really important because when i was very very young i attended a meeting of 2000 men and mm -hmm. i was only alone we were only two women and um, in the entire meeting we were told to hold grass as a way as a symbolic way of asking men to give you permission like they are like god and we said no we can't we are just here we don't talk but we can we can only listen but when i see today thousands and thousands of 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 Maasai women confronting mm -hmm. the those with powers those with political and money power it it gives me joy and mm -hmm. i just want this work to continue forever and ever mm -hmm. and uh also, we have just started a curriculum. We call it securing, secure, securing community future. Mm -hmm. The fundamental objective of this curriculum is really, is really to, to, to have a very clear, a very clear strategy and a very clear messages to the community who are the one who are holding these norms to change them their attitudes toward women proper rights toward women's education, toward women's land rights, mm -hmm. and toward women's dignity in the society. And I have seen, and we have started a pilot project with a hundred men mm -hmm. and a uh, hundred women. And I can see a serious big dialogue starting from the community level all the way to the national level. Mm -hmm. And I think this is really, uh, this is also really something, something which is important. We are, yeah, so I think movement, I, I believe in movement building and uh, and I believe in women network across the globe that mm -hmm. we have a story to tell and we have a lot of work to do and we still have a lot of inequalities within our society and within the globe that we are operating in. Thank you so much, Manda. And the last bit of this session will be connection to the international forms of activism and scholarship. Do you have any connection with activist scholars organization in other countries? We have been working very closely with uh, Global Fund for Women. They mm -hmm. have been linking us uh, with other women network in Kenya. And, uh, and I think the work of Global Fund for Women, the stories mm -hmm. that they, they write, the skills that they give to women, Mm -hmm. And the resources that they are directing specifically to women organizations, mm -hmm. I think is really fundamental. So we have a, a very strong link with them and, mm -hmm. uh, and other, other few groups who are funded by UN Women. Mm -hmm. And we are, currently, I, we are currently linked to uh, African Women Leadership uh, chapter in Tanzania under UN Women. And we met a lot of, we meet a lot of uh, young women and uh, uh, other women across Tanzania who are who are feminists and uh, yeah so these are the people that we work with okay can you tell us about your background about your life uh, what is the central commitment in your life what do you consider your most significant lifetime achievement professionally I think uh, yeah my background is that uh, what motivated me to do this work is that uh, when I grew up I grew up in a very patriarchal society whereby women are, are facing double marginalization when you are a girl mm -hmm. you are you are not superior always a boy is superior and enjoys a lot of opportunities so when we start going to school we were only two girls in our village and there were over 30 boys Mm. And uh, when my when my um, my sister or my the other girl uh, almost finishing primary school, she was forced badly to get married. And when she refused, she was beaten and made walk across the village so other women can witness her naked. And uh, I was not able to help. My heart was burning. I wanted to help so deeply. I was so depressed. 
and they develop a critical understanding of inequalities at that uh, at that uh, uh, young age. And I was really, I was very disturbed by this action because I could not help and I really wanted to help. Mm -hmm. And this is when I started really wanted to become a teacher in our village. And I, want, I, I started thinking, how do we as women create a new generation of Maasai women who have dignity, who have the right to stand and say no to injustice within the community and beyond. And when my turn came, I, I, was, I was supposed to get married and I refused, I ran away out of my family and I, I, I managed to escape and get education. And I, when I finished my university, I came back straight and worked with, 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 with women. And I started, we started with widows, we started uh, rescuing a lot of girls who went through this, who are going through the same, the same process that I went through. And so um, we find ourselves, we were hated by the sweetest to be, we were hated by the community, we were hated by the families, and, and this motivated me really to do what I'm doing today. And I am very proud, not only with the number of the, the, the girls that we have affected, but I am very proud more with the change, with the significant change of men's attitude towards women's rights and education. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of we have uh, a lot of men now, especially young men, who accept that there have been a lot of inequalities in the society, and therefore this is a time to create dialogue and talk about it openly. Mm -hmm. I am also very proud with the movement of women who have been coming together to address strategic issues that are affecting them as individuals mm -hmm. and the society. For example, the leadership component, mm -hmm. uh, women have been really able to stand and contest to become local leaders, national leaders, and uh, regional leaders. And this is really giving us hope and it gives us energy to continue working. So, yeah. Thank you so much. That takes us to, to the second part. What drew you to the work? You've mentioned about a few of the things that you said, and how did you first come to be involved in work in this area? Um, I, 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 yeah. Can you repeat, please? I'm saying, what drew you to the work you do or have done, and how did you first come to be involved in this work? I, I, I actually came to get involved in this work because uh, I went through a lot of difficulties. My childhood was not easy, and uh, I wanted to. I, I wanted other girls or women to get opportunities um, they, uh, as men mm. do. So I wanted to bring women together to start questioning assumptions that are made by those, the traditional leaders, the society and the government who make a lot of decisions without considering how their decision is affecting women. And I started with my own family, questioning my father, questioning my brothers and questioning the entire society. Mm. Uh, so I I, I, I feel like uh, working with, we are currently working with over 13,000 uh, women in, in Northern Tanzania. And I, I, feel like, I feel like this is an important work, but also I am very much drawn or motivated to do this work because in Northern Tanzania, uh, our way of life as pastoralists is not recognized as a, as a sound and viable way of life by, the, by other societies. So we are always treated very, very differently because first, pastoralists are few. And again, women are facing more marginalization because the decisions that are affecting their life, like um, land, land rights, land issues, women are not getting involved. So I wanted to see the voice and the right of women integrated in the entire society, starting from changing social norms all the way to changing policies that are directly affecting affecting the women differently because women are getting affected differently from the society. For example, uh, the, 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 same, the, same, the same woman has no control of her body. She has no control of how many children she should have. She has no control of her sexual, sexual life. She don't even have control, have control of who should marry her. So, and the same, same woman who cultivate a small plot of land, she don't have a voice and she don't have, she don't attend uh, she don't even know where the laws are being made. She's, she don't have that particular land security that it, it belongs to her because it's controlled. But the same, same woman that we are talk, 
we are we are talking about she don't have access to essential services like education she still walk 13 mm -hmm. kilometers to get access to a primary school live alone university she don't have mm -hmm. economic power because she can't make a decision of selling cows or owning any cows mm -hmm. so we are really like seeing things are not well and this is motivating me to do exactly what i do so mm -hmm. my i i, I feel like um uh, we should continue to advocate for women's rights and women should come together in solidarity and challenge all this assumption to be able to, mm. to get their position and to get their desires. And, and most of the time, powers mm. are not given. You have to find ways to get it. You have to be strong. You have to, be, to have confidence to, mm. to actually stand. And get and get what you want at the end because our life is actually on our hands. But when we come together, we can make a greater impact. Thank you so much. I was thinking, have you experienced any personal changes as a result of your engagement in your feminist academic work or activism? I have seen a lot of changes. I have seen mm -hmm. a lot of changes, uh, especially we have been working with all these women groups. And they have been accessing um, microcredit loans from private banks and from their own income. And this has never happened before. So economic empowerment is, is actually very, very important to continue mm -hmm. giving power, women power. I have also seen a significant increase in uh, women discussing um, their lives in the family. So I have seen a big increase in women and men discussing and having a dialogue at the family level, something which mm -hmm. has never existed. Mm -hmm. But also I have seen a big change when we started working with PwC over the last 20 years ago, we were using police to rescue girls. Today, mm -hmm. hundred and hundred of Masi girls in Northern Tanzania where we work and any other part of Tanzania, they flew forced marriages. And I have also seen a lot of laws are changed in favor of girls especially on domestic violence. When you are beaten, you, you know where to run to. When we started the work, we didn't do, even know where to run to because mm -hmm. yeah, they were very few professionals. There were very few um, social services you can get or legal services you can get. So these are some changes that I have, I have, I have, I have been noticing throughout, throughout our work. But also I have seen a lot of women who are now really anxious and eager to take leadership position. Something mm -hmm. which has always been taken by men. I have seen women standing strong, mm -hmm. standing firm, and really advocating for their own right to become leaders. And I feel like this is something which is really important because it gives women power to make their decisions that are, uh, to make the important decisions in their life. And I have also, yeah, and I think this is really another key um, kind of an achievement that I have witnessed. Thank you so much on that part, Manda. And finally, reflection on your work. How do you understand the term feminism and what has it meant to your work? Can you tell us something about your relationship with other members in your own organization? Yeah, our, organ our, our, our organization is the, the main focus is really on women. So everything we do is really women first. Talk about staff, talk, talk about the board, talk about our beneficiaries. Our organization is led and managed by women. Uh, the, we are a membership of organization and uh, our members are only women, but we have two men on the board for specific purpose because they have specific skills. So uh, yeah. And how do you understand the term feminism and what has it meant to your work? Uh, yeah, feminism is really, uh, is a very important word that describe, in short, the feminism means how do we, how do you promote those who are marginalized, those women who have no voice, how do we how do we empower them to be able actually to understand the oppression system, the systemic system that are oppressing them? How do we promote their voices to be able to stand and defend their own rights? And I think the feminism feminism is not a bias. Feminism is really is existing to bring 
equality to where there is no justice. Mm. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you so, so much for availing this important time for us to be part of this um, project. Yeah, I totally appreciate. And uh, if you have any specific question you want me to write, I'm, I'm available. And I also appreciate. And uh, Asante Sana Nakazinjema, you can continue sharing with us okay. about the progress of this important All right. project. I shall. I'll send you a link where you can get other, like, access to other work that has been done globally. Okay, Asante Sana. Aye, Asante. Aye. Bye. Bye.